installing the spreader plate system. This system is intended for use with suspended floors or fitted onto battens to give a high performance, low build height system. Tip. Additional insulation may be needed, usually between joists to prevent downwards heat loss. Confirm with your building inspector that the insulation used is correct before proceeding with the installation of UFH. External walls should also be insulated to building standards to prevent heat loss. Initial pipework. Planning the installation is important. Working out the path the pipework takes from the manifold or one-room pack to the zone you're working on should be carried out before starting to lay the plates. The manifold must be located as centrally as possible to the circuit it's feeding. If the spreader plates are being used over a suspended floor, then the pipework from the manifold can be routed through the joists, just as happens in conventional hot, cold and heating practice. Observe drilling zones, and remember that when using this method, the pipework can just as easily start in the center run of a board as at the end. Prepare for the plates. If fixing directly to the joists, be sure to employ a safe working practice. It's important to make sure that the plates are laid flat and flush to the floor that they're being laid onto. It's also important to prevent the heat going down. The best way to achieve both of these aims is to support the sheet insulation between the joists. They should be supported by battens fixed to the sides of the joists and be 15 mm plus the depth of the insulation down from the top of the joists. If the insulation is not deep or strong enough, then a further supporting ply board may be needed. This 15 mm gap will allow the grooves of the plate to sit on the surface of the insulation sheet and prevent the loss of contact that would occur if the plate were allowed to sag. Whichever fixings are to be used, care must be taken not to let the fixing protrude above the surface of the plate. Leave a 25mm gap between the plates and line the grooves up with a short length of pipe laid in the groove. The plates can be cut easily across the width by fully supporting the plate and using a jigsaw. A sharp knife can score the plate along its length, enough to allow the plate to be bent and snapped. Start at the perimeter and work to the furthest circuit to be installed within the zone. The grooves are a tight fit to give good performance, so there will be some force needed to put the pipe into the groove. This is another reason for supporting the plates properly. Take care whilst pulling the pipework around the returns in order to avoid kinks. When the circuit is finished, the pipe can be returned to the manifold to complete the circuit. Using JG plates from below. This is usually when engineered type joists have been used that require the joists and sheet floor to be bonded and screwed together. It's mostly the same procedure as plates from above, the pipework follows the same route and covers the same pattern and area. It's just that the plates are fixed to the bottom of the floor by working from below.